guess what? Street cleaning hasn't happened yet. You hit a fart rock. Boom, body slam on your child. What's up guys? My name is Levi and this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. And today we're doing nines. Nine worst skateboard products. You've all seen it, people trying to innovate something to help you in your skateboard life. Who knows, it's either people creating the products that don't skateboard and have no idea, or people who had the best intentions, but their finished product came out as total bull crap that sucks super hard. Either way, these are the nine worst skateboard products. Number nine, Grind King rims. These were fancy wheel bolts that went on the end of your trucks that basically were wider to cover your bearing. The goal was to keep dirt and dust out of your bearings. They also made them look fancy, kind of like some shiny gold rims. What they actually ended up doing is the very thing they tried to prevent. Rather than keeping dirt and dust out, they actually locked it in, clogged your bearings up like crazy, and they made it so your bearings would break and seize, rendering them actually useless and worse than just having wheel bolts in the first place. But they looked dope. If you were down with Peter Smolik and all the gangster old boys at that time, you were down with Grind King rims. Number eight, Z-Roller trucks. Z-Roller were these trucks that on the hanger, basically where you do 50-50 grinds on that area, instead of having an area for you to grind and wear down, they had a roller. It was basically an axle that spun around on there with the intention that you never had to buy trucks again and you could grind faster because you'd get on something and you would basically roll along the ledge. But what actually happened is you would go to grind, they would get a chip or something, and then they would catch, and they would actually wear down, and you would wear them down so fast. Z-Roller trucks, again, did the opposite. They were meant to last forever, and they lasted even shorter than normal trucks, and you couldn't grind as far because they would seize up and just be so brutal. Number seven, Tail Devils. Tail Devils were designed for dumb little kids. Basically, it was this plastic piece that screwed in your tail, kind of like rails or the guards back in the 80s. You screwed it on your tail, but it had flint mixed in with it. That's the thing inside of a lighter that makes it spark, so that when you did a tail scrape or you slowed down to stop, it would throw sparks, making it look cool, hence the name Tail Devil. But what it did was it rendered your board useless. You couldn't do any tricks. You couldn't pop at all because you lost everything in this stupid flint infused piece of plastic. And it made your board heavy. Dumb. If you want to know more about the history of Tail Devils, hit the link below and it'll send you over to Jankum's website. In there, they actually have this mention of these trucks that throw sparks the same way Tail Devils do. It's crazy. Go ahead and read it. Number six, aircraft skateboards. They were made of airplane aluminum. The goal was that you never had to buy a deck ever again. And they were lighter, more durable. They were just better all around, in theory. The messed up part, if you looked at the bottom, they weren't just flat. They were shaped and they had ridges in them, basically for less friction. Then they had plastic on the nose and tail to protect it from razor tailing. What actually happened, the plastic broke off. Then whenever you'd go to pop a kickflip or you would popsicle on your board and sack yourself, it was a razor sharp piece of steel. So it was a razor sharp piece of steel. We're talking testicles on the floor because your bag got ripped open thanks to airplane aluminum. I was actually a sucker for this. I was 10 years old. I went to my dad. I said, dad, I have a great idea for you. You don't have to ever buy me skateboard decks ever again because I want an aircraft board. It will last me forever. My dad being the carpenter that he is, tried to talk me out of it and I refused to listen and I somehow convinced him to buy me an aircraft board. I never sacked myself on it, but I did honestly get huge gouges in my shins. And if you heard me coming around the block, it sounded like an airplane was landing because of the way the hollow tubes went through the bottom. Dumb invention. Number five, any plastic skateboard ramp company or a ramp that you buy on Amazon. Any plastic skateboard company or any ramps you buy on Amazon. In theory, it's a great idea. It stores easy, it's light, any little kid can carry it out into the street or on their driveway and skate it. You can click them together, it's super awesome. In actuality, these things were so light that you would go to take, you would 
go to go off like a little wedge ramp and it would shoot up from underneath you and you'd be smashing teeth on the concrete. Or you would go to click them together, boom, finger lost because they'd click your finger right off. These ramps sucked. So unless you wanted to fill them with sand or bolt them into your driveway, they were useless. And Amazon isn't a local skateboard shop, so we hate them anyways. Number four, Powell Bonite Skateboards. Powell is obviously a huge part of skateboard history and they're still ripped today. They're a good company. But get this, they put out this board called the Bonite Skateboards. It had this patented technology, so we don't know exactly what it was made out of, but a bunch of people who own these boards said it was basically like a tar paper used for roofing or some sort of fiberglass infused paper that was in the middle. The idea, it was lighter, stronger. Their slogan was actually beyond strong. In actuality, what ended up happening, they broke easier than maple boards and they just sucked. Anytime that they would get a little bit of water, let's say you rip through a puddle or something like that, it would swell up and your board would warp and get super messed up. Powell Bonite skateboards sucked. It's interesting to note that Powell now actually makes a board called the Flight Deck. It has fiberglass infused in there and they have now actually achieved probably the strongest board ever and it rips its good. But Bonite, not a good part of the history. Number three, Avenue Trucks. Avenue Trucks are marketed as the most advanced trucks on the market. They make bold claims like increased speed and increased pop. On their website, they make crazy claims like our base plates are designed to compress on every ollie. They say once you pop, that preloaded compression is immediately released and force is expelled upwards into the deck. Their claims are bold and I guarantee you it's a load of horse crap. The power from your ollie comes from bending down and snapping into the tail. It does not come from your trucks compressing and shooting you upwards. If it worked, think of it like this. You're bouncing on the trampoline with your friends. You're having a great time. Everyone's looking cute. You're at a great barbecue. Your friend sneaks up, double bounces you. Whoopa! Snapped neck. You're really hurt. You lost a few teeth and that cute girl now just saw you pee yourself at the barbecue. That is what happens with Avenue Trucks. <laughs> Number two, the longboard stroller. Listen, it's not a skateboard product, but it's in the family and it's probably one of the dumbest inventions ever. First, nothing screams cool dad like seeing a big old boy riding one of these. You have your first son, maybe you're on your second kid. You're flexing on all your friends. You're riding this thing. Guess what? Street cleaning hasn't happened yet. You hit a fart rock. Boom, body slam on your child. I need to know how many children have either been concussed by their father landing on their child full on WWF supreme slam on these things or sadly have shot their child into traffic because a car is in front of them. <laughs> Just because you love your baby and you love your sport does not mean they need to go together. Last but not least, number one. It's called the Rockoflect. This company was so unbelievably successful, it's already out of business. How many of you guys go and skate a parking lot? We're talking slappies on curbs. We're talking cruising down the street to 7-Eleven, grab yourself a Slurpee. And you hit a fart rock. Boom, I've got the invention for you, my dog. Toss a rock reflect on the front of there, scoop up all the rocks, and you will never hit a fart rock again. This thing was literally a shovel that bolted into the bottom of your trucks and it shot and shoot away rocks. The reason it was so perfect is because every terrain and every ground that you've ever skateboarded on has always been perfectly smooth with no banks or grooves or cracks in it. So naturally, it'll never get caught on anything. Psych, go as fast as you can down a hill on a sidewalk and enter the road. As it goes down there, for sure you're not gonna scoop your rock reflect and ride into traffic and get limped by a car. Actually, it's gonna happen because your rock reflect thought you were a fart rock, sent you into the car. It was meant to send rocks away, but in actuality, it actually gathered rocks because your truck couldn't clear over rocks, it was shooting up into that, and you're actually stopping and getting smoked even more easily. Either way, don't buy this thing because you're gonna skin your belly all up on the concrete because you decided to rock reflect. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
My name is Levi, this is Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding, and you just watched Nines. Nine worst skateboard products of all time. Now stay tuned for comment of the week. All right, comment of the week. We got a spicer, spicer, spicy one. It's from my dog, Judd Cameron. Here's the first thing, Judd. You're wearing a fedora in your photo on there. Listen, we're all about the underdogs, but we gotta draw the line somewhere. He says, this video is inaccurate and bad in too many ways to list, period. Listen, Judd, it probably is. But you just watched the whole thing and commented below. Thank you for building into our algorithm and building our page. We love you guys so much, especially you, Judd. Peace.